Welcome everyone to this episode of the Ask Jason Jellius Show. I'm Jason Jellius, Michigan Realtor. I appreciate you tuning in where I'm going to be sharing with you eight tips on how to get a good price on a home. So you're out there, you're looking for homes and you find one and you want to place an offer on it, whether you are doing it on your own or you have a buyer's agent and you're wondering, is this a good price for this home? Am I making the right decision? And so I prepared for you guys eight tips uh, that you can use to double, to basically double check and confirm that you are getting a good price on a home. First one is compare similar homes. So before you throw your offer over, if time allows, uh, have your agent or look, you look at different comparable homes in the neighborhood to see uh, what's for sale, what has sold, right? And uh, what is actually pending, which means under contract. Uh, you can get an idea. For example, if you see a similar home down the street or around the corner or, you know, under a mile, within a mile away, and you see that it's less money than what you're putting an offer in, maybe try to figure out why through, through the photos, look at the photos and see if there's if, if it's more updated or less updated. And then that'll give you a better idea as to uh, whether or not the home you wanna place an offer on is actually a good price. Next one is check how long it's been on the market. Has this home been on the market a long time? 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 100 days. Okay, how long has it been on the market? If it's been on the market for a while, chances are uh, the price is wrong or there's something wrong with the home and nobody, nobody's biting on it. But chances are it's the price. Uh, the next one is check the number of offers that it has. If there's multiple offers, try to get that information from the listing agent. Try to find out if there's you know three offers, five offers. If there's a lot of offers on a property, then chances are the price is good or actually the demand is there and it could drive the price up, okay? Next one is check the unsold inventory index. So this index can provide information about the supply and demand in that housing market, okay? Uh, next one is consider the emotional value. Do you really have to have this house? Does it really matter if, if you're paying more or too much or whatever, right? More above market value, all right? You, the, the, there's an emotional value that comes into play where it's like, you know what, example, I want to buy a house and I'm like, you know what? I want to, I want to purchase this house because I want to live in it forever till I die. And I love the neighborhood and I don't care if I pay more because I know I'll get it back when the value increases, hopefully. Okay. And the emotional value kicks in. Okay. Next one is consider your budget. Can you afford it? Does your budget allow you to uh, put an offer in on the home at that price? Okay. If you're putting an offer in on a $300,000 house, uh, is that going to be at the top of your budget or at the middle of your budget or at the lower part of your budget? Hopefully the lower to mid part of your budget, okay? But just know that um, you have to know what your budget is, which is why you wanna get pre-approved first to get a better idea as to where you will be comfortable placing an offering on a home. If you're comfortable at that 300,000 mark that I mentioned as an example, then that's perfect, right? Your budget allows for that. And that's awesome. And account for other fees as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, like utilities and you know, uh, waste removal, right? Garbage removal, I should say, not waste. Well, it is waste, right? Garbage is waste. Um, okay. So anyway, the next one is consider your credit score. Can you get approved with your credit score and afford that home? It kind of ties into the check your budget but also see where you are pre-approved at with your credit score. Maybe if you wait a little bit longer, you can get you can get your credit scores up, which means you can afford more for less money, right? Because that's how lenders give out money. They, they look at credit scores among many things, many other things. Okay, but consider your credit score. And the last one is consider closing costs. So the general rule of thumb is that closing costs are about two to 5% of the purchase price of a home. Okay, so two to 5% of the purchase price of a home. Okay, so, you know, factor that into what you're actually um, uh, placing an offer in on a home. And then think about your down payment. Are you putting down a down payment on a home? Okay, that comes into play too. You gotta have this money up front when you close. So 
Just know that there's gonna be closing costs as well on the buyer side. The seller doesn't pay for all the closing costs. They pay their own closing costs and a buyer pays their closing costs. So I hope you found these eight tips valuable. Go ahead and share your thoughts in the comments. What do you think? Have you purchased a home and you felt that maybe you had some buyer's remorse? Um, or if not, you know, that's okay too. Um, share your thoughts in the comments. And um, by the way, I, I, you know what? I just wanna stress something too is that uh, if the home makes sense for you, right? Let's go back to that emotional value. If you really gotta have that house and you're and you're you're not completely paying overprice, right? Maybe it's a little bit over, or maybe the appraisal came in and it's you you know a little bit less than than what you want to pay, um, and the seller is not gonna budge. You know, if you're emotionally attached to the house and you know it's the one, then you know what? Go ahead and go for it, right? As long as it makes sense for your budget. All right, so take advantage of that emotional value when you're purchasing a home. So, but hopefully you put these these eight tips into play first and make a logical and sound decision, okay? Anyway, <laughs> hey, share your thoughts again in the comments. Be sure to follow me on social media. Those links are in the description and uh, hit me up on YouTube. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell too so you get notified of other videos. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.